We are sitting on a diamond, so let's speed up the pace. Laser weapons will produce a couple of different damage effects. It will uh, provide heat damage on targets, it will make a hole in it, it can warm up the target. And these uh, military effects can be exploited in a number of different situations, like the countering of drones, trying to counter incoming mortar rounds, and other threats that could be there in great numbers. There are several countries that have been developing the directed energy technologies for many years. Other countries are not in the development, but they will be faced with the directed energy systems when they are conducting joint operations. So what we want to do is to make sure that the developing countries and the countries that are actually going to use the capabilities come together under a same understanding of what the capability can bring for their future operations. What you see here is that we uh, are setting up an atmospheric laser propagation trial. The trial will show us the performance of the laser, which is an important evidence for the capability offered by lasers. We are working together with the TNO team from the Netherlands to characterize laser effects over the sea. Uh, we have systems for characterizing the rain the visibility, the optical turbulence effects, and in the tent we had the camera system to get the reflections from the laser beam on the target. I'm the trial leader of this experiment. Uh, we're currently performing uh, laser propagation experiments to the island of Tessel, which is about 3.6 kilometers away. I'm with the University of Central Florida, and I uh, operate a laser test range. And I'm here uh, participating and uh, observing uh, the operations I do here, so we can better cross learn from each other on how to better do our future work and uh, share knowledge. NATO SES 140 has been set up to develop a way of furthering the capability offered by directed energy weapons. It means we are seeing this promising technology but we do not see a utilizable capability yet. And this happens with a lot of promising technologies. They are being developed and at some point they are not coming into service. We try to figure out where are the blocking points for that uh, capability development and try to make ways open to relieve those. Given the group's output, I strongly believe that directed energy capabilities can give truly new options to field commanders, especially as counter-drone capability. Moreover, we develop new insights about the organizational preparation of the introduction of new technologies like directed energy. We expanded the organizational lines of development and included more of what I call external triggers of influence. This brought us to the most compelling insight. The contemporary method for the development of new technologies follows the lines of the technical readiness levels. We propose a change of perspective and have established a new measuring system, the Capability Readiness Levels or CRL scale. We underpinned the CRL scale with a system of achievements to be fulfilled at different stages of maturity. This is called the Military Utility Readiness Framework, MIRF. MIRF provides a consistent means for NATO nations to assess the maturity of their directed energy capability as they transition into frontline operational service. Following the framework ensures operational users are brought into the process sufficiently early to ensure that the capability delivers real military utility. Executing the development of new emergent technologies along the lines of the MIRF framework provides a powerful tool for one of the biggest organizational challenges. How to transit the valley of death. We strongly believe we can offer a new approach to transform emergent technologies like directed energy into new viable operational capabilities. Our field commanders need them urgently. We are sitting on a diamond, so let's speed up the pace.